Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the second module of a DDCO which is combinational logic. So it has two topics here. We will be discussing what are the important questions, how do you remember the formulas and diagrams. If you if you watch this video till the end, you can expect more than 80% marks in the exam easily. So make sure you don't miss any topic and hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Without wasting any more time, let's get started. So first topic is the combinational logic. So uh, what is a combinational logic? Okay, so we have the circuit diagrams present and the uh, combinational logic means that we will be uh, getting the output based on the current inputs okay so we have a circuit we will be getting the output based on the current state of inputs okay that is called as a combinational logic okay so uh, the first one is the binary adder and subtractor so to understand the binary adder and subtractor we have to understand what is adder and subtractor so addition of two bits is called as a half adder means two bits are there and uh, you are adding another two bits that is called the uh, the thing which performs this operation is called as a adder half adder okay if it is three or more bits it's called as a full uh, full adder and if performs both add and subtract operation it is called as a binary adder or subtractor okay so what is half adder so in half adder we have two inputs a and b which you want to add them like two um, binary numbers like three and four we want to add so we'll be putting three in a and uh, putting four in b then we'll be giving it to the half adder it will perform the sum and it will give us the output and the outputs can also be two the output is sum and carry okay carry bit you know right in addition we used to do that is the carry bit okay so what is the truth table so if a is zero and b is zero zero plus zero is zero so sum will be zero and carry will also be zero if uh, a and b are 0 and 1 then it is uh, addition will be sum will be equal to 1 and carries will still be 0 if it is uh, 1 and 0 in that case it will be again sum is 1 and the carry is 0 if it is 1 and 1 what happens when it is 1 and 1 1 and 1 the sum is equal to 1 uh, sorry the sum will be equal to 0 here not 1 okay sum will be equal to 0 and the carry will be equal to 1 okay sum will be equal to 0 and the carry will be equal to 1 okay so this is the two table for half adder all right next we have the equation for it so this is the equation x dash y plus x y dash or x x or um y so uh for getting the s value if it is some value it is nothing but the xor of a and b okay a and b is xor if you do you'll be getting the sum value and uh, c will be equal to x and y because in this case whenever both inputs are 1 then only the equation here we are getting as 1 right other all case it is 0 so that is uh, replicating the and operation and this is replicating the xor operation if either one is only 1 then only this equation will be 1 here rest all the cases it will be 0 okay so that is the equation of um, the half adder the circuit diagram is also very simple same to this one if you are trying to implement using this it will be x y bar x bar y and operation is there and those will be going to the or operation and uh, that will be s and for c we'll be having x and y here going to the and gate and will be here we'll be getting the c okay if you are going with this operation here we'll be using the xor gate for x and y the xor operation and for uh, c we'll be uh, taking the x and y value into the and gate that will be c okay both are the valid okay both are valid both are valid Next we have the full adder. In full adder we have three inputs A, B and previous carry bit. Okay, so if we do three bits we will be getting a previous carry bit also. That we will be considering. Right, so that's uh, the uh, third input and outputs will be two again same S and C. So the two table will be as follows. If you add 0, 0, 0 the sum will be 0, carry will also be 0. 0 plus 0 plus 1 is 1, carry will be 0. 0 plus 1 plus 0 is 1 and carry will be 0. 0 plus 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1 is 0 and uh, the carry will be 1 here and 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1 and the carry will be 0 1 plus 0 plus 1 the two ones are there so it will be 0 and the carry will be 1 1 plus 1 again uh, 1 plus 1 again here it will be 0 okay sorry i wrote it as 1 here it should be 0 okay here it will be 0 and uh, the carry will be 1 and 1 1 1 see since 1 1 1 means 1 plus 1 is 0 0 plus 1 is 1 so here i have written as 1 and carry will be 1 from the previous one which is 1 plus 1 there is the carry 1 came and uh, this is the truth table for um, full adder okay so full adder will have 3 bits okay 3 bits equation will be as follows x bar y bar z x bar y z bar x y bar z bar means it is uh, alternate okay once this is true once this is true and once this is true 
plus xyz and carry will be x5 plus xz plus yz okay in the same way you can easily make the diagram also just take the corresponding inputs perform it with the and get and do the or operation of all of them you will be getting a s which is sum for c you will have to get x5 plus xz plus yz so this is x y this is x z this is the yz so this will be the carry okay since you have understood what is for half adder and full adder binary adder is nothing but it performs the addition of n bit binary numbers so in full adder we have 3 bit and half adder we have 2 bit if you want to perform like 15 bits for that time you will be using the binary adder okay it is a cascade connection of n full adders we will be having uh, full adders one by one how many full adders will be there n full adders means how many bits you want that many full adders will be there so example of 4 bit uh, adder so full adder this is also full adder full adder full adder and here is the current uh, carry going in and i'll be showing you an example of how this is working so bear with me this is the uh, sums coming out here s values output and this is the carries from the previous one and it is going to the input in the second full adder and this is the ab inputs of a and b so suppose that i want to calculate the sum of a and b a is 111011 and b is 011 0011 so the sum will be equal to 1110 let's see how it happens okay so first write the carry which is initially as 0 you will be putting here and a value what it is 1011 right they have given as 1011 and what is b b is 0011 okay just fill these two and write a 0 here this will not be there in the first place okay next what you have to do you have to add the operations again okay? a plus b what is 1 plus 1 1 plus 1 sum is 0 and carry will be 1 so put a carry here okay so before putting here you have to put the carry here okay 1 so 1 plus 1 is 0 and 1 and uh, since 1 is here you will be carrying the 1 here so what is 1 plus 1 plus 1 both sum and carry will be 1 again you will be carrying this 1 here 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1 there will be no carry you will be carrying no carry here uh, 0 plus 0 pl uh, 0 plus 1 plus 0 is 1 and there will be no carry here so what is the sum you have got 1 1 1 0 that is same as this one okay this is how the binary adder works for n number of bits you can extend this to as many bits as you want and just have to write here and do the carry operation and do the sum operations and keep on writing the uh, values here so your result will be this value which is present here okay and what is binary adder subtractor uh, it does the subtraction option operation as well uh, along with the addition so the difference only uh, is that in both uh, adder and subtractor so the two table i will just draw very quickly how will the two table look like for the subtractor okay so for the subtractor you'll be having a here you'll be having b here and you'll be having the difference and you'll be having the borrow instead of sc you'll be having d and b okay let's write borrow and this is difference okay now let's see if it is 0 and 0 what is 0 minus 0 the difference is 0 borrow is 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 okay what is 0 minus 1 0 minus 1 will become negative so we are taking going to take a uh, borrow so borrow will be 1 and the difference is also 1 1 minus 0 is 1 but there is no borrow here what is 1 uh, minus 1 the difference is 0 and the uh, borrow is also 0 okay so uh, this is how you will be representing the uh, subtractor okay uh, like same way you don't have to go in depth for this just you have to know that uh, this is how the subtractor is and uh, you can implement the subtractor also in the binary adder uh, same concept how you will do that uh, if you observe this diagram carefully what's happening here see here we are uh, writing the same thing full adders here how many bits we want that many full adders here and the s outputs are here as previous one s1 s2 s3 and c0 c1 c2 c3 and c4 and so on everything is same here even the uh, operations of a b a1 b1 b2 b2 all these things are also same except that two things are getting added here the first thing is there is an m line okay m line is here okay m line is for setting if you want to use it in the uh, adder form or in the subtractor form for that it is m if m is 0 it is subtractor if m uh, sorry if m is 0 it is adder if m is 1 it is subtractor okay that uh, sets the m okay and uh, within b we have an xor gate here okay xor gate xor gate xor gate with b's that's the difference and here we'll be having the c4 and this value of c4 here and the c3 here those will be considered for the final uh, output okay in the xor it will be going okay so this is how the binary adder and subtractor works you just have to remember this diagram and explain whatever i have uh, told you now okay if m is 0 it's an adder if m is 1 it's a subtractor okay next we have the decoders decoder is a combination uh, combinational circuit that converts binary information from n inputs to two n unique output lines okay 
so uh, what does that mean see here it converts binary information from n input lines to 2 uh, power n input lines so suppose that if n is equal to 2 then 2 power n is equal to 2 power 2 that is equal to 4 if n is 2 uh, 2n will be 4 okay so we can construct a 2 is to 4 decoder now what does it do we have the inputs here a and b and here have the outputs q0 to q3 okay so uh, based on the value of a and b we will be getting either q0 q1 q2 q3 how we will be getting if it is both is 0 we will be getting q1 if a is 0 and b is 1 we will be getting q1 if a is 1 b is 0 we will be getting q2 if a is 1 and b is 1 we will be getting q3 okay based on the value of a and b we will be getting what output we have uh, like the selection of the output depends on the input states okay that is our decoder and how does it happen in the circuit diagram here we will be having a here we will be having the b here we will be having the outputs okay this is the q1 q2 q3 and uh, here we will be having the AND gate okay for the decoders we will be using the AND gates and see here the inventory is present here okay if you want the B0 or B if you want the A0 or A based on these values suppose that I want uh, A is equal to 0 B is equal to 1 so A0 B1 A0 will pass from here and it will come here okay and B1 will pass from here and it will come here so this input and this input where are these two are getting into consideration both together this place right so this place these both are getting considered so this place will be true and this will be taken as the output q1 will be taken as the output this is how you use the decoder okay in the same way there can be three to a decoder we'll be having three inputs here and based on that the outputs are present here this two bit was there here it is three bits based on these values of x y z you'll be getting one of the output like for example if it is x is 1 y 0 z is 0 that means the answer is d4 okay d4 will be taken into output when x is 1 and uh, y and z both are zeros okay the equivalent circuit diagram is as follows same thing inverter is present here just one extra uh, input is added with uh, extra inverter here okay so the output will also be corresponding to what input we are giving here in xyz next we have the 4 is to 16 decoder the same thing see if you remember carefully if you have the three bit values okay so suppose that we have the three bit values here now if I put all zeros here and if I put all one here and copy this same thing here so what happens zeros with one, this one and ones with this one so what that whole thing comes out to be is a 4 is to 16 decoder so it depends on if this is combined with zero it will become the first half of uh, 16 bits and if this is the same thing is combined with a one it will be the next half of uh, 16 bits okay that's how the truth table works right first eight zeros second uh, eight ones like that so based on that the fourth input if it is a zero it will consider the first half if it is a one it will consider the second half d8 to d15 will be second half d0 to d7 will be the first half that is how you uh, can uh, construct a 4 is to 16 decoder by using two three is to eight decoders okay now we have a following question implement the following boolean function using 3 is to 8 decoder okay observe carefully we have two outputs here s and c so just make s and c here and here we have the xyz so three inputs will be there xyz and here we have the values 1 2 4 7 and here we have 3 5 6 7 so 1 2 4 7 should go to s so that's why that's what we will do 1 2 4 and 7 that one all will be connecting to the s value here and the remaining 3 5 6 7 3 5 6 and uh, 7 this will be taken into uh, the c value here okay so 7 is gone for both of them uh, and this is how you implement a, a boolean function using the 3 is to a decoder next we have the encoder which performs the reverse operation of the decoder so here it we have 2 power n input lines and we convert into n output lines okay so this is 4 is to 2 encoder you have the four inputs here whichever will be one here that combination will be considered for example if d2 is one and rest of them are zero what will happen if d2 is one means uh, the value of q0 and q1 will be uh, one zero right because two is corresponding to one zero in binary so uh, when it is two here see it is one zero here okay so like that we will be uh, determining the q values by using the inputs here either of them should be one both of them cannot be one then we will have to use the priority encoder that's an invalid state in a uh, normal encoder okay 8 is to 3 decoder will be performing this one uh, whatever the combination we want here like for example uh, if i select 5 the 5's binary equivalent is 101 so if i uh, put this as 1 it will go here and it will give this output 101 so this is the truth table for the 5 i just told you it will be 101 okay and these are the equations 
whichever is one here like for example z what is the equation of z where it is one here 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 so in this case what is the value which is one d1 and here what is the value which is one d3 here what is the value which is one d5 here what is the value which is one d7 so z will be equivalent of d1 plus d uh, d3 plus d5 plus d7 rest also are similar okay next you have the priority encoder it has an additional function for priority it is same as the normal encoder but priority will be there which has the highest priority that will be considered okay like for example here you can see the priority is set according to the value which is present here this has the highest priority this has the lower and this has the lower and this has the least priority okay so if this is one this output will be selected if this is one at that case it will be checked if there is no one here if there is no one here this will be selected okay like that whichever uh, input you are giving like d1 d0 and all the priority will be considered suppose that i give both d2 and d3 as one d3 and one then in that case which output should be selected either this output should be selected or this output should be selected it based on priority priority is more for d3 the more the farther the more the priority so here d3 will be selected and d2 will not be selected because it's x here right so d3, uh, d3 will be selected this is called as priority encoder okay next we have the multiplexer multiplexer is a selector okay it has some inputs it will select one of them okay so uh, uh, the selection is carried out by the set of selection lines okay so we have a two is to one multiplexer how does this work see we, uh, you can see a diagram here a wedge diagram and um, this form uh, is having two inputs i0 and i1 so this diagram is uh, comprised of two inputs i0 and i1 which are going here and uh, this wedge shaped uh, diagram will have a selection line as well as the select line and it will have the output of uh, f okay so multiplexer is depicted by this diagram now what is the input i0 and i1 okay that is equivalent to 0 and this is equivalent to 1 okay and the select line is present here now the select line can select either i1 or it can select either uh, i0 so what the value of s will determine if i1 will go to the output or i0 will go to the output so if s is 0 i0 will be selected if n, uh, s is 1 i1 will be selected okay this is a 2 is to 1 multiplexer similarly the diagram will be as follows the s value is here so here s value is going okay if s value is equal to 0 that means what will happen this will go to 0 this will stay here as 0 and i1 will not be selected because i1 will come here and since this is 0 here it will be false got my point but since i uh, s is equal to 0 this will turn it as 1 and it will go here as 1 and this will come here since this is 1 and this is i uh, i not this value will be considered in the and gate and this will be true here i1 uh, i not will be taken into consideration the opposite happens when s is 1 when s is 1 this will be taken into consideration i1 will be the output and uh, 1 will turn into a 0 and 0 will come here and switch off the and gate and i not will not be considered so when s is equal to 0 it is i not when s is equal to 1 it is i1 okay next we have 4 is to 1 multiplexer here we'll be having four inputs and two select lines okay so based on the combination of this we'll be selecting uh, one of the inputs okay so if i want to select two what is the binary equivalent of two it is one zero so s not i have to select as one and s1 i have to select as zero okay so uh, if i do that combination at that time i2 will be selected and gone to the um, output okay that is a 4 is to 1 same uh, circuit diagram as well here also uh, instead we just have two select lines 8 is to 1 also works in the same way for the 8 bits we'll be doing the same thing okay whichever we want to select set the combination that input will be selected and gone to uh, the y now the question in the exam which could be asked is design a 4 is to 1 multiplexer using only 2 is to 1 marks okay so here what we'll be doing 4 is to 1 means there will be four inputs i0 i1 i2 i3 divided by 2 after dividing by 2 we'll get a 2 is to 1 marks here with a one select line that will be one output and another two will have another select line and another output now these two uh, outputs can be taken as input uh, with uh, another two is to one and we'll get a final output here so the four is to one mul uh, multiplexer is uh, being realized by using two two is to uh, by using three two is to one muxes okay only two is to one muxes are allowed so this is how you construct it okay next we have the um, eight is to one using four is to one and two is to one we can use both 4 and 2 for constructing the 8 is to 1. So firstly divided by 2 times 4 here 4 here this will be 4 is to 1 with 2 select lines and this will also be 4 is to 1 with 2 select lines here this will be going and this will be also going here but this is 2 inputs so it will we can use 2 is to 1 this is another select line here and this will be the output okay 
you can also be asked a question like increment the multiplexer using f of, f of x y z one two six seven okay observe here very carefully what's happening in one two uh, six seven we have first make the uh, circuit diagram i mean the two table zero 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 one and so on after we do that the z value will be taken into consideration okay here three inputs will be there uh, x y and z okay now we will be writing it normally as 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 and so on till 1, 1, 1. After that, what we have to do? Okay. Now we have to simplify it a bit. How we can simplify? If you observe it carefully, here what uh, the final output we are getting as uh, 0 and 1. Okay. So the final output will be uh, f is equal to z. How we are writing as 0 and 1? Okay. Let me off the pointer and I'll explain you how this is happening. Now see, they have given us some values, f values which are true which is 1 2 6 and 7 right so this is 0 this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 this is 5 this is 6 this is 7 right so 1 1 means this is true 2 2 means this is true 6 6 means this is true and 7 7 means this is true so wherever what number they had given for the corresponding f they uh, they have written as 1 1 1 rest all are zeros now if you observe a pattern okay now if you observe a pattern what is the pattern the pattern is that it is very similar to z right see z value is zero here here also it is zero if it is one here it here also it is one that two can be formed as a group wherever f is equal to z if it is these cases f is equal to z in these cases it is ulta right see here here it is zero and here it is one it is ulta so f is equal to z bar you can write like that and here it is 0 and 0 no matter what's the value of z here it is always 0 no matter what the value here of z is here it is always 1 so it f is equal to 1 right so based on that we can reduce 8 outputs to 4 outputs right so it will be more simpler okay that observation you have to do okay if you solve enough number of questions that observation will come to you automatically okay after you have done this much what is the inputs x y and z okay let me take the pointer okay so the inputs are x y and z so we'll be writing here uh, x y and z okay and uh, the other inputs are z z bar 0 and 1 so we'll be writing here z z bar 0 and 1 okay now uh, we have to get the final output f x y are the select lines since we have considered z with f we will not be considering that okay z is equal to f we are considering it as a uh, set of inputs here and x and y will be considered as select lines 0 0 is similar here so whenever it is 0 0 the value will be z like that if it is 0 1 then the value will be z bar if it is 1 0 the value will be 0 if it is 1 1 the f will be equal to 1 these are two are select lines okay if x is a select line y is a select line the value of these it can be 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 okay like that we have grouped it together now based on that what value of uh, y is what value of x is based on that the corresponding output will be taken into consideration okay what value you have to take so if it is 0 in the case 0 0 it should be z if it is 0 1 it should be z bar if it is 1 0 it will be 0 if it is 1 1 it will be 1 and that output will be going to f okay this is how you implement a uh, multiplexer using uh, the given equation uh, similar question we have uh, implement using a multiplexer for four inputs we have okay so now you observe take the first three inputs as uh, the normal inputs abc that's the selector lines abc and then we have the d which is combined with f so if you combine these three if it is 0 0 0 what should happen 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 1 now here we have the d outputs now observe this based on these numbers which they have given the marking is done 0 and 1 in the f column and uh, if you observe here this is equal to d this is also equal to d this is equal to d bar and this is 0 0 d 1 and 1 so we have got eight uh, outputs based on the combinations of zeros so zeros and ones for abc that same thing we will be uh, doing here abc you are writing here and here based on 0 to 7 what outputs you have to get now for example if i want 3 okay what is 3 3 is uh, 1 0 uh, what is 3 uh -huh, 1 0 0 so if it is 3 i have to get d bar right so for d bar what i have to do i have a d here i'll take it i'll do the bar operation here i'll pass it to uh sorry i have to get um 
okay this is 2 sorry this is 3 right 0 1 1 you have to just consider the abc so this is 3 0 1 1 so uh, in that case i have to get it as 0 right so uh, 3 will be having 0 see it is connected to 0 let's take another example 7 7 is here in 7 if it is 1 1 1 i have to get it as 1 so 7 will be connected with 1 just see how many types of output are there d is there d bar 0 and 1 so d d bar will be taken from here only and 0 and 1 wherever the number is associated with that for example here it is d right what is the number 101 which is 5 so for 5 d should be connected put d here and go to 5 connect it like that okay this is how you implement um, 8 is to 1 multiplexer okay next uh, topic we have is the three state gates okay three state gates is nothing but we'll be having a uh, control input c we have a normal input a and we have the output y now output y can be either a or uh, z, uh, high impedance okay when it will be a uh, whenever the control input is one if this is one then the output will be a if it is not one that means it will be high impedance okay this, that's all you have to remember there is nothing much uh, more th more to this than what i have discussed now okay the next topic is the uh, sequential logic the second half of the module so sequential means that the output will not only depend on the present state okay like how we had discussed previously whatever is the present state we are giving based on that the output is happening but here we will be also considering the previous state outputs okay uh, let me explain you how this is working see here this is the block diagram for sequential circuit okay this is the combinational circuit which you discussed till now all the circuits are combinational ones which you discussed now the inputs are going here along with that something else is also coming what is that that is nothing but the previous output right previous output is also coming here and deciding what it should be the next output so this type of circuit is called as sequential circuit because here a sequence of outputs are being considered uh, in from the previous state okay so we have two types we have latches and we have flip-flops let's discuss what is latches Lat latches operate on signal levels and it does not work on edge triggers let me explain what it is okay the first one is set reset latch sr latch okay in sr latch what happens in sr latch you will be having a s button here and r button here s means set r means reset okay and here we'll be having the or gates and here we'll be having q and q bar so let me explain what happens so s value is there r value is there both can be either 0 or 1 and q is there and q naught is there okay so s means what set set means on right so when s is 1 the q value will be 1 q is the true value okay and when we make both as 0 still it will be same only like for example there is a light there is a switch okay you on the switch when you on the switch it will become uh, 1 so it will be q q will be 1 and when you uh, leave the switch as such so if you don't again on it because it's already on when it is no, having no input also after this case it will be still having one only right until we off the switch by using reset when reset will be one here then q will become zero and q naught will become one okay q naught is the ultra of q and again if you leave it it will be same state after that uh, if we try to add both like if you try to on uh, and off the switches what will happen nothing will happen right and it's a forbidden state why because it's not possible only to on and off both at the same time so this state is called as forbidden and it will be zeros in both q and q uh, q naught okay this state cannot happen in uh, real life because on and off light cannot be on and off at the same time right so this is the set and reset latch you can make it using nor gates you can make it using nand gates also the functional table will also be similar just that it will become reverse here wherever you had uh, zeros at the top it will become one here and wherever it was one it will become zero here okay next we have the flip-flops okay so flip-flop means it will uh, make the changes on a trigger what is a trigger trigger means while you on the light not after owning the light while you on the light the change happens okay it's a slightly different concept okay so um while you're awning this is the awning state and this is the offing state so based on whether you on or off at that time change happens that is called as a flip-flop and there are two types if it is the type where you uh, the change happens when it's awning it's called positive edge if it's happening when you off the light it's called a negative edge okay so uh, based on that <clears throat> So based on the positive and negative ones, we have a few kinds of flip-flop. Okay, so the first one uh, among them is the edge trigger D flip-flop. Okay, D has uh, D flip-flop has two D latches and one inverter. Okay, so the two latches are called as a master and a slave. Okay, that's all you have to remember. Here we have a master uh, latch and here we have a slave latch. Okay, and we have a clock also here. Now see, clock can either be zero or one. There are two possibilities. 
so d will be having some input okay some value will have to be gone here and come to the output but before coming to the output it has to pass through the master latch and through the c the slave latch now how this works if clock is equal to zero what will happen the zero will go here and it will go to the enable a bit and it will become zero enable bit uh, enable bit is zero that means it's disabled so when clock is zero this will be disabled and this will be uh, changing the value from 0 to 1 and 1 will be going here and this will be enabled. So whenever the value of clock is 0, the slave will be enabled. Whenever the clock's value is 0, the slave will be enabled and the output will be equivalent to whatever the Y output is there from the previous output. Okay. And when clock is 1, when clock is 1, this will be enabled and this will be disabled. Okay. When clock is 1, this will be disabled and this will be enabled. So what happens when this is enabled? this input will be going to the D, master, D latch master's input and that will be coming as output here to the Y and it will come and store here. It will not pass uh, through this because the uh, disabled, it's disabled when clock is equal to 1. Then what happens since this output is present here when in the next instance when clock will go from 1 to 0 when the negative edge happens at that time this will become enabled and this will become disabled so that output from the previous one will come to the output here since the output is coming only when the negative edge happening uh, it is, is happening it is called as a negative edge triggered d flip flop okay that is the only difference you can create even positive uh, edge triggered uh, d flip flop the uh, construction will be slightly uh, different okay but this is important from exam point of view and this is what you'll be explaining if they ask you about the d flip flop in the exam in the same way we have the jk flip flop also let's have a look at what's the difference here we have if j is 0 and k is 0 q of t will be remaining q of t means q of t means the value of q at time t okay what it was there at t plus 1 also it will remain same if both j and k are 0 suppose j is 0 and k became 1 if k is 1 means the value of uh, q will become 0 if j is 1 means the value of q will become 1 and if both are 1 that means it will trigger uh, it will make it ulta that means it will reverse the value of q okay whatever the q of value is there whether it was 0 it was 1 it will reverse the value okay the, uh, that happens when both j and k are 1 okay next we have the trigger flip flop trigger flip flop is the same one which happened here at the last case it will trigger the flip flop means it will toggle the flip flop okay so here if trig uh, toggle is 0 it will have no change if toggle is 1 it will have a change here it can be created from the jk flip flop if t is equal to 1 that means this will also go to 1 here and this will also go to 1 here so j and k both value are 1 if j and k both value are 1 what does that mean that means it's a complement uh, will happen like the uh, reverse value of q will happen okay it will toggle the value if q is 0 it will become 1 if q is 1 it will become 0 okay so that's all from the module 2 of uh, ddco and if you found this video helpful make sure it's the like button subscribe to my channel for more like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one